Your boy loves, loves, loves to see it. I love to see God move in the most powerful and unexpected ways, reaching people that is really tempting for people like you or myself to write off and say, yeah, they're never going to believe in Jesus. They're so stuck in their ways. However, Jesus dies for all people, including Muslims, and he is reaching them by the droves right now. And this uh, testimony popped up on TikTok for me. And I wanted to share it with you because it's really, it's going to blow your mind. If you need to know that God is powerful, if you need to know that Jesus is not just another religion, not just another philosophy to believe in, but he is the risen Christ. He is the resurrected God. He is the God who will judge the living and the dead. Watch this testimony. I think it's going to encourage you and uh, stick around to the end because it's going to blow your mind. Check this out. I am the luckiest person on the face of the earth, not only to be born a Muslim, but also to be born a Muslim in Saudi Arabia, right near the heartland of Islam. But I grew up with a zeal for a religion, but without knowledge concerning who was the real God that I wanted to worship. Huh. I assumed I was worshiping the true God, the God of Abraham, the God who basically created everything, but his name, his character, and everything about him, according to the Quran, I found out later was different. I believed with all of my heart that the more devout and more fundamentalist I become, and I don't mean it in a negative way, I mean in growing and understanding Islam and my requirement and my duties and how to perform them, the better chances I have in making it to heaven. Huh. I also learned more about Christianity and that their form of Christianity was totally different than what I had in mind. And they prayed with me, they prayed for me, they prayed over the meal, they prayed together, they prayed for the nation, and it was really a, a very, very uh, a powerful encounter. The moment that I felt was appropriate for me to strike by converting someone to Islam, a couple moved from California to where I was, and we began to build a relationship and a friendship. And I felt that my mastery of idioms was so high that I can engage them now into a spiritual conversation. And sure enough, I dove right into it. And I began to share with them about why Islam is the only way now. Uh, okay. I hope that this encourages or challenges someone in the comments right now. I pray that when we see people as on fire for their faith, as devoted to their faith, as this guy, I mean, he's about to unpack that what he believed, be, you know, grew up in the Middle East, grew up in the heartland of Islam, was devout about what he believed, even though he said he had zeal but little knowledge. He was all about that life. He was all in. He was surrendered. He wanted to know the, he, he wanted to, to be as on fire as possible for his faith. And he was determined to share his faith with other people so that they could be converted to Islam. You see this. I hope it challenges you as a Christian. I hope it challenges you to not be quiet and casual about your faith and what Jesus did in your life. Because if people who don't know the truth are willing to do this, are willing to go to this degree... Who are we who have the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ? Who are we to withhold that from other people and to make it all about us and our comfort and being ruled by the fear of man? I'm challenged. I, I love I love that this guy, uh, the Lord takes this guy's zeal and then redirects it. So I won't interrupt anymore for a little while, but I did want to hope that I hope that speaks to somebody right now. You're too quiet about your faith. You're too quiet. Stop holding it to yourself. It's not meant just for you. It's meant for you to share to other people. And I remember that this family was so kind, gentle, patient with me. They would hear my arguments and objections and then gently will ask me to provide evidence to support any of the things that I said. But then they will begin to use scripture and other evidence to support why they believed in what they believed in. Slowly and gradually, I began to encounter a challenge from a family that was ready to share about Christ. Mm. Just as the scripture says, always be ready. Mm. Mm. 
Mm, 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 mm. Second Timothy chapter four, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. I've said this in multiple videos in the past. I'm an online pastor. I'm not a rogue pastor. I'm actually part of a church. I have a spiritual covering. Uh, I lead in this church and um, I preach the word. Obviously, I preach the word on my platforms. But what I challenge people who watch my stuff, who follow me, who subscribe, if you are a Christian, if you've given your life to Jesus, the mantle, the call, the responsibility, the duty, the privilege, the honor to preach God's word is not only, it's not exclusive for those who hold a five-fold office in the church. What does that mean? Pastors, prophets, apostles, evangelists, and teachers. No, if you are a Christian, you are called, you and I are called to hide the word of God in our hearts and be ready to preach it in season and out of season. We got to be prepared. And he encountered some Christians who didn't just rely on their pastor's faith or their grandpappy's faith. No, they they were about that life. They made their faith their own. They read the word. They memorize the word. They hide it in their hearts. And they're praying for God to open up doors for them to share their faith. And here they are encountering a guy who's extremely about his own faith and they are ready to plant seeds of righteousness. It's awesome. And I could not support or defend any of my objections. And that was a, an awakening for me because I lived all of my life believing in certain lies. And when it came down to it to prove these lies, I failed. So I was discouraged. And I began to slowly and gradually question what I have learned or studied. I still didn't doubt Islam, but I doubted what I have learned about Christianity hmm. or what I have thought of Christianity according to my own belief. And more seeds are being planted, more encounters, more truth about Christ is being shared. And that took almost 12 years journey. I come from a country like Saudi that you are. 12 years friend do not be discouraged if you've been trying to share your faith with your friends and your family for years and you feel like it's never gonna pan out dude this is like i want you to think about if we're called to be fishers of men think about like if you're fishing for you know some tiny fish in the riverbed or whatever like it's probably it's a lot easier to reel those in but if you start going deep sea fishing if you're going after some marlin or some tuna, like it's a jaunt to get out to the water and it takes a long time to reel those fish in. And so God is going to bring people into your life, into my life that he wants us to influence, but he's going to ask us, are you willing to play the long game to reel these people in, to show them the love of Christ, to teach them the truth about Christ? And ultimately, hey, we're called to water, we're called to plant seeds, but it's the Lord who brings the increase. We can't, we can't put those results on us. We got to leave them to the Lord. We can't be discouraged when we're not seeing results happen quick enough. But we also got to be faithful to the call with the people that God brings our way as long as it takes. 12 years. I mean, that challenges me with some people in my life that I've grown weary and pray, praying for and sharing the truth with. But these people were committed to seeing this guy experience everlasting life. Are well-grained, basically, and founded in your belief. But at the same time, it took the power of the Holy Spirit and the patience of this family and the first family and their love that was shared with me. But the truth that emanated from the scripture that rocked my foundation. As a result of this, I began towards the end of this 12 year to really be discouraged from faith in general. And the last year and a half of that period, I almost left Islam altogether. But then... I got this yearning, you know, I'm, I'm accustomed to praying daily and fasting uh, all the time and, and doing these rituals and all of a sudden I'm finding myself not doing anything. So guilt began mm. to take hold of me because I'm thinking that I'm accumulating bad deeds now. Wow. And I worked hard for my good deeds. Nevertheless, I've been invited to go to church with this family multiple times. And finally, in the summer of 2001, I accepted to go to that church with them. Come on. But I went there with an agenda. <laughs> I wanted to learn more about Christianity from that church so I can convince my friends that they're wrong. I started to attend some of the small groups. And slowly and gradually, everything I heard in the last 12 years began to make sense. 
And I am hearing the word speaking to me directly. Wow. And I start to get convicted in my heart. And now I understand what God has done for me. And I got to a point of being terrified because I got it now. I hold up, hold up. I want to read the scripture for you real quick. Check it out. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Oh boy. Come on, somebody. You hear that? This guy is being, he's being in the presence of the word being spoken, of the word being read, and the word is reading him. The, the word is showing him that what he's been believing for the longest time has been a lie. And he's getting convicted. And the fear of God is coming upon him. I have to make a decision. And then September 11 happened. And I am so thankful that I agreed to go to church that weekend because I was terrified of what the backlash might look like towards me. Everybody knew I was a Muslim. Whoa. How are they going to feel about me being there in such a tragic event? But my friends assured me that Christ didn't teach us to behave this way. And I went and I heard a message from the Gospel of Matthew about loving your enemies and praying for those who persecuted you. And that was the nail that sealed the coffin for me. I knew. <laughs> yeah, boy. Come on, man. That's why it's so important that we love people. Because the goodness of God, the goodness of God, it says in Romans, brings man to repentance. The moment of truth is here. Make a decision. And for a couple of months, I would get this scary dream. Muslims, by the way, are terrified of the idea of death, uh, what might happen to you after death in the grave, because there is this belief that you also live another life in a grave, different life. You could be tortured in the grave. You could be pampered in the grave. But then also judgment day is another terrifying experience because you have no clue how God is going to receive what you have done for him. Mm. You're at the mercy of his mood at that time. So my dream was I died and I'm standing before the throne of God and I hear God telling me, why did you reject my son? Why have you rejected him? And I didn't know the answer to this. Oh and I was surprised to even hear a question like this from the God that I thought he denied that Jesus is the son. Right. Yet apparently the true God is telling me, you've heard everything you wanted to hear. This is what makes Christianity so much more fundamentally different from any other faith is that Jesus claimed that he was God. He was one with God, the son of God. Okay. And all other faiths, like they see him as a teacher or in Islam, they, they actually revere him as a prophet, but not as God's son. And so that's why he's like kind of taken aback that in these dreams, God is saying, why have you rejected my son? Why have you rejected him? And two months later, I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. That was in November. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. To come and share my testimony, I remember, I mean, the first week I called the pastor. I said, okay, so how many times do I need to pray? What other rituals do I need to do? And he was confused. Like, what do you mean? You know, he thought like I was calling a Catholic church maybe or something. I don't know. But nevertheless, he said, come on over. Let's meet. And he explained to me. That in Christ, there are no such thing. You pray anytime, and you pray in different forms. And at the same time, it's not really about do-do-do's. Jesus have done it already. You have now to express that faith. Come on. And slowly and gradually, I began to see the work of God in my life. But let me tell you something, you know. After I'm trying to just grab a verse for you guys real quick. So that's another thing. If you're new to the faith, if you don't fully understand this, you got to get this. Jesus 
makes it so that you and I don't earn our favor with God. We don't have to question whether or not we have favor with God based off our good works. Is he going to judge us at the end of this life? And are we going to have more good deeds on one end of the scale than bad deeds? And will those good deeds outweigh the others? And will that allow us to get into heaven? No, the point is you and I, we cannot earn our righteousness. All of our good deeds are filthy rags, as the book of Isaiah says before God. No one is righteous. No, not one, says Romans chapter three. And I want to read for you this verse because you think about, dude, this guy's been real. Like God has been real in this fish in for 12 years. And this is what it says in second Peter three, nine, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not willing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God is so, so much more patient than we are to see his kids come home. When I accepted Christ, I immediately suffered persecution. Rejection, loss of marriage, almost lost my son. I ended up losing my job. On top of that, nevertheless, it was almost God's way of trying to reshape me and prepare me. In a way that the Lord had a ministry for me has to do with teaching. Slowly and gradually, the Lord was showing me the things that he wanted me to do. And I remember telling the Lord after I accepted him, Lord, I want to serve you, except I do not want to do anything with Muslims and Saudis. <laughs> and the Lord says, we'll see about that. <laughs> and what do you think I do in my ministry? Muslims, Muslims and Saudis. And Saudis. Don't ever tell the Lord what you want, okay? Right. Because he can care less about what you want. He's going to prepare you for what he wants you to do. Amen. He helped me launch what we know today as Sira International, which stands for the Center for Islamic Research and Awareness. And it's been a blessing. And I'll be lying to you if I say I went to bed hungry any day since I started this full-time ministry. The Lord has always provided. And the Lord has always opened the right doors for me. I am the lucky. Yeah, boy. Oh, let that be an encouragement to you. If you're somebody who's been praying for someone for a long time and you think it's hopeless, there's no way they're turning to God. God cares about that person more than you do. And he is patient with them. And he is long suffering. And through all sorts of different circumstances that are outside of your control, he is softening hearts. He wants to see people come into his kingdom. He wants to see more Muslims come into his kingdom. Come on, somebody. And he is giving you and I an opportunity to, to be bold, to be truthful, to be prepared, to share the truth in love, to care for people, man, to demonstrate the love of Jesus, not compromising the truth, but to demonstrate his love and his grace. And God is also wanting to release new ministries and new assignments. And God is, uh, God rewards, I'm seeing it firsthand, man. God rewards his workers well. He takes care of them. And so my prayer for you is that this encourages you. Be bold about your faith. Dig into the word. Be a student of the word. This is the, this, the, in these days, we have the ability to share the word of God, to share our testimony at scale, particularly through these devices. So let's do it. Let's be bold. Let's be patient with people. And uh, let's be a part of this amazing harvest because God is saving those who uh, are the least likely in the world's eyes. Amen. God bless you all. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and subscribe if you like the content.